Hello and welcome to Ars Electronica Home Delivery, our program that defies pandemics and lockdowns and brings the joy of music to you directly <laughs> at home. And my two guest musicians today, Makina Mikawa and Daniel Russell Davis, warm welcome. Thank you again for coming. They are already laughing about me. <laughs> but I think after this beginning, this is what it's all about. And of course, I'm sure you know the program of this evening already with this probably most popular song from all the classical music history. We have started an evening that is dedicated to Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and his Zauberflöte. An opera that premiered uh, in uh, 30th of September 1791, only more or less two months uh, before uh, Mozart died in the middle of uh, the French Revolution, the year where the um, very unknown but extremely important uh, text was written by a woman called Olympe de Gauche, who was the first woman fighting for female rights as part of the French Revolution. Imagine this. Fraternité was okay, but when she came and asked for equal rights for women, she wasn't accepted for very long, but that's a totally different time. It's also the year when steam engines became uh, popular, so it was actually really a very tumultuous time. Uh, and the Zauberflöte, of course, is probably the most popular and most famous thing that we have uh, from this year. We will talk a little bit more about uh, this very important piece of uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and also the wonderful arrangement by Alexander Zemlinski after the next two pieces. So we will, of course, not play the whole program. That would be too long for this evening. But we will uh, hear now uh, the two arias um, from the König in der Nacht, where she calls for the vengeance of the hell. And then the response of Sarastro says, you know, calm down. Here in my <laughs> halls, you don't do things like this. <laughs> and Very after good. this, we make a little break, talk a little bit, and then we have the grand finale of the opera. So this is the program for this evening. And I think without any further ado, I would like to ask you to bring this next wonderful pieces. And for you, please enjoy the music.
What a beautiful piece. And it's really, I mean, this majesty of Sarastro theme calming down all the furor of the König in the Nacht. It's really uh, amazing. And I think it's just another wonderful example how great the, not only music, but I think the whole conceptual dramatic thinking of Mozart was already in time and he was of course a, a super efficient producer just a few weeks before the premiere of the Zauberflöte was also the premiere of La Clemenza di Tito uh, so actually really a lot of music how do you bring this in well, four hands? Well, <laughs> well Mozart of course uh, in his letters he wrote to his father that uh, he had three string quartets racing around in his head and he was hoping someone would commission him so he could write them down. <laughs> uh, Clemens de Tito uh, was in opera seria uh, in Italian, which was the language, of course, he spoke very well and was the language of the court. And then came Schikanator with this project he just could not say no to. Yeah. Uh, it was, he obviously just loved the material, was fascinated with the words, with the the whole situation and Mozart was living in a, it was a very sad time, it was, yeah, as you said before, two months before his death, he's, uh, he, he's lonely, he feels unloved, he's unsuccessful, um, he never really experienced what a tremendous success this opera was, the magic flute, he, he didn't live long enough to know what, what it was uh, mm -hmm. that he had left the world actually. And you can just sense him pouring his whole soul and his whole, all of his joys in this music. And it comes out, it mm -hmm. comes out. It's not a composer who, when he was sad, wrote sad music. It's, uh, he sought joy in, internally and produced it in a way that we all benefit from. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not only joy, it's also very playful. And you found a very nice little detail uh, that you told us before that really yeah. proves this playfulness of Mozart's approach. Yeah, Maki and I were having a short rehearsal tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, today, <laughs> this morning, <laughs> this morning, and I, I, <laughs> and I showed her this place uh, in the area where Papageno is looking for Papagena, and uh, it's just a simple accompaniment where the, the bass plays, it's three, three times exactly the same thing. And, uh, the third time, he just turns one little octave around. I, I'll show you what I mean. He must have had such joy with this because if you don't know it's there, you won't hear it. But he knew it was there. And when I rehearse with the musicians um, and they find this, they have tremendous joy and it brings the whole thing into life. Please, please. Um, <laughs> the, the, um, the, the, the basses play. And then again they do it. And then again, they almost do it, and then they do. <laughs> so the last time, that's instead of doing boom, boom, he does ping pong. Yeah. And that's just, so with the accompaniment, you hear. <laughs> this is just, a, and then with, with the whole band. <laughs> to admit I never would have <laughs> found this little detail no, even in the many yeah. rehearsals that we had but once you you get it I think it's it's really in this it's little detail is so much of the secret of the liveliness of his music yes and the and the depth and the depth uh, we're going to talk about uh, because we're playing the finale to uh -huh. the, the, twi the, the second act and the finale I was reflecting also <coughs> it's like a four movement <coughs> excuse me a four-movement symphony. There are four big parts to this, uh, one in E-flat major, one in C minor, then one in G major, very happy and mm -hmm. like a scherzo, yeah. and then a finale back to the original key E-flat major. And he was so musically profound and so, uh, so learned mm -hmm. 
and yet he didn't wear it on his sleeve. This is a, a, an opera and music for everybody on the street. Yeah. And yet all of the intellectuals and people like, like me that like to find these details f have great joy in the depth and the interest of this music. Yeah. So you told me there is uh, among professionals like you the big discussion which finale of which opera ever, uh, ever yeah. is the, the, most, the best one, the most important yeah. one. And it's like Figaro or Zauberflöte. Yeah. Well, so what is well, it for you? No, it comes down to <laughs> you're looking for the best finale in the opera literature. Well, it's either... <laughs> the second act of Figaro finale or the fourth act of Figaro finale. But it's definitely Mozart. <laughs> but I think <laughs> Don Giovanni also comes in the <laughs> equation. And then you have this second act finale that we're going to play later. And uh -huh. uh, this is where he suddenly just, he has arias and set pieces and recitatives and the, the normal thing. And then this is a, 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 f a flame really that later composers like Wagner took and tried to do as well, mm -hmm. but of course, no one topped this. Yeah. The arrangement is made again by Alexander Zemlinski. Yes. Maybe you want to refer a little bit to him? <laughs> um, this is his 150th birthday year, mm -hmm. Alexander Zemlinski, wonderful composer, uh, conductor, pianist, student of Arnold Schoenberg, uh, teacher of Alban Berg, um, just a great, great, great musician, and at the turn of the century, I think we talked about this, uh, the turn of the 20th century when Universal Publishing in Vienna was formed from different small publishers. Marx, who was the uh, organizer and then the owner, needed material for uh, the public. Mm -hmm. So we asked uh, Zemlinski, among others, <laughs> to make forehand versions of People, pieces that the people loved. Mm -hmm. And of course, the magic flute was one of them. And when we found this, uh, we, we just had yeah. great fun and great joy with it. And I recommend it to everybody. You too. recorded it many years yes. ago already. Yes. So yes. please go to the web and order <laughs> the CD. <laughs> yeah. And Maki told us a, a, a very nice story before. So I think that relates very much to this power of music to really spread joy to the people. Yeah, exactly. Last year, the first lockdown in Austria, and um, the, uh, the in Austria, the people starts and at 6 p.m. and one day everybody knows you can open the window, apartments window, house windows, and you can play the music. And it was and at six o'clock we were very excited and then opened the door. It was so beautiful. Everybody played with for everybody, for another people's. And we <coughs> choose this magic flute mm -hmm. because then we played them for us, <laughs> either for the people and it was a very free mm -hmm. the, the first day, first moment. <laughs> From the of the lockdown yeah. like last year, one year. It was year very ago. emotional too. And emotional. People didn't all play, of course, at the same time. <laughs> you would listen to what the neighbors yeah. offered, and then in yeah. Italy they were singing from the balconies, yeah. and it was uh, it was yeah. hard to imagine. But this was one year ago. Yeah, Man, yeah. we still have the lockdown. We're still, it's still yeah, we're still yeah. in the middle of it. Yeah. But again, the. Magic flute is your message that you are sending, and instead of just opening the real window, we are opening again our digital window and streaming the magic flute to bring joy, to help you all to kind of go through this uh, crisis of lockdowns and pandemics that we still have ahead of us. And actually, we are now going to hear this one and only finale. <laughs> of the magic flute and it's also the finale, the conclusion of this second season of home delivery concerts with Maki Namikawa and Dennis Russell Davis. But uh, we are already working on more programs for the future. So please stay tuned if you like their playing, if you like piano music that meets digital images. And now without any further ado, I would like to bring the finale and please enjoy the music.